Hello, in this video I'm going to help you look through your own study uh, if you would like to do that. So what I'm going to do is show you how exactly you look through these uh, different images and what these uh, things over here, for example, mean exactly and what all of the different colors are that we're looking at just to kind of give you a guide to help you look at your own images. So I'm going to have a normal uh, MRI study on this side of the screen. I'm going to go through a couple of different ones. And then on the right side, I'm going to use a model just to kind of show the part of the body that we're looking at. So over here now, I have a lumbar spine MRI, and we're going to start with that one. Uh, so I'm assuming that you already either have access to an online medical uh, database or uh, medical record where you can look at your own images or you've uploaded your images onto your computer via a disk or flash drive. Um, this area here just in this box this would be called an image viewer so you may hear that term or see that written down somewhere. Anything that shows these files is called an image viewer and the files themselves are called DICOM files so all radiology images are called DICOM files um, and each image is called a DICOM uh, image or .dcm is the uh, file extension. So most disks come with folders of these images. So um, for example, we're looking at the lumbar spine here from the side. So we're looking in this region right here in the lower lumbar spine here. And uh, these are the vertebral bodies, for example. Um, so as I'm looking here, you can see we have one image on the screen. Now if I move the mouse, you can see the images are moving. So we call this scrolling, um, and so we're moving images from side to side. Uh, this is uh, what, again, we call scrolling through images. Um, so one image is called a slice, and then uh, each uh, slice, all these slices added together are sometimes called stacks of images and in MRI this whole thing is called a sequence. So over here we can see these words here. This says SAG T1. That's actually SAG for sagittal or side view and T1. So T1 is one of the terms we use for um, what type of sequence this is. So the magnet that interacts with us that makes these images can uh, be modified in different ways and we can get different colors on the images here and that helps uh, us as radiologists figure out what's going wrong. So T1 images are known to be good for looking at anatomy. So what that means is they give really good detail of like the anatomy within our body. In T1 images fluid is always dark. Muscle, soft tissue, organs are going to be this dark gray color. Bones are a little bit lighter gray uh, and then the edges of bone which is like the um, strongest uh, part of the bone, the cortical bone, that's going to be black. Um, discs, intervertebral discs are also gray. So T1 images, as you can see, especially in the spine, are mostly gray. Uh, this white area here, this is fat. So that's one thing that is bright on T1 images. So we have another common sequence called a T2 sequence. And this sequence is usually good to show disease processes. The reason why is things that are infected um, or inflamed or injured tend to be bright on these sequences because fluid is bright. So you can see here all this white, this is cerebrospinal fluid. This is the watery fluid that our spinal cord sits in back here. Um, and you can see corresponding, it's dark on T1. It's hard to see what's going on. On T2 here, we can see the spinal cord uh, is that gray color but then the fluid is white. Intervertebral discs normally have some fluid in them that's why they're brighter on this T2 as compared to this T1. Um, this sequence here this is called a stir. It's not really important what it stands for but basically it's a sequence that makes fat black. So back to this T2 you can see the fat is white here too just like on the T1. So if we want to distinguish when something is not fat uh, we use a fat saturated sequence, meaning that we're nulling out the fat or basically making the fat black on purpose. So if there's something that's not fat in that area, it will not be blending in. So uh, a stir sequence is one of those types of sequences that can do that. 
some sequences are uh, going to be abbreviated with fat sat after them or FS and so we can see here this black fat on this scan. Most MRIs are done in at least another view so for example this is a T2 again but it's done in the axial view which is basically done from the feet up towards the head so this is the right side this is the front this is the back so this is the front this is the right side. Uh, so this would be an axial T2, but everything else is sort of the same. You can see here, here are some kidneys. Um, and then the abdomen has a bunch of fat in it too. So you can see this bright here. This is just fat within the abdomen. So now what I want to do is show a brain MRI. Uh, so we're going to talk about the same sort of things here. There's a couple um, of other sequences sometimes used in the brain. But again, really the point of this all is to tell you that these are what we call sequences over here. They have slices, and as you scroll through them, you can look at different slices. So, for example, now we're looking at the brain. This is axial view again, so it's from the feet up towards the head. As I go through one slice at a time, I'm going to start at the top of the head here, and each image is going to take me a little bit lower. So as I go through like this, it's like slicing cross-sectionally and going down through the brain like this. So this is the bottom here. This is a cerebellum, and then all the way up to the top here. So this is a T1 image. So just to point out here, um, white matter of the brain is a little bit brighter color than gray matter, which is this kind of lining the white matter here, and then the white matter isn't through here. Some of the central parts of the brain have some gray matter. This is called the deep gray. And then again, fluid is dark. So that's the T1 sequence. Um, of note in the brain, the T1 sequence is what's typically used to give contrast. So if we have a contrast enhanced sequence like this one, it's like a T1 except for you can see all these linear uh, or straight line looking things. This is contrast within the blood vessels. So things that would have blood flow to them are now going to be bright. That's the point of the contrast. The reason for that is again the T1 images don't really show much of anything because the colors are all close together. So the contrast helps bring out things like blood vessels or tumors or infection, things like that. So this is a post-contrast T1 uh, image. And then you can see here it actually has FS. I talked about that before, that's fat sat. So all the fat in the scalp here is black. So uh, that's also making things easier to see. The whole point of this is to make uh, pathologic things or diseases easier for us to see. We can do a different view in this post contrast as well. This is like from the side. So this would be kind of in this uh, area here, um, just like this. Uh, this is the pituitary gland. It has a lot of blood flow, so it's really bright. Um, and then again, we can do T2. This is from the front. This is called a coronal view. Uh, or front view. So this would be looking straight on at somebody's face. And then this is the T2. Uh, so again, uh, things with more uh, water in them are going to be brighter. So you can see fluid here is bright white. Uh, and then we have the white matter and the gray matter. So the white matter in this case is a little bit darker than the gray matter. And uh, we have uh, sort of fat all the way throughout the face like within the orbits here. This is all fat and white um, So this is a non fat sat image and then some sequences that are unique to the brain So the diffusion weighted sequence this basically is a very quick sequence that is going to show uh, things that are bright that um, Are basically strokes. This is really what this is used for so there's nothing on this one. That's bright um, but if you have a study that mentions a stroke, um, it can be bright on here. Other things can be bright, but that's typically what this is used for. And lastly, a common brain sequence is what's called a flare image. And uh, this is, instead of making fat black like a stir image, this is making fluid black. So you can see here, the fluid is perfectly black. Um, the reason this is done is it actually brings out things in the brain itself. So. Um, tumors or what we call edema which is like brain swelling or demyelinating lesions such as an MS they, they will be very bright on this and, and easy for us to see. Um, so those are the basic brain sequences and spine sequences. 
Um, I went through those in particular because they pretty much will encompass most of what you'll see in the rest of the body as well. So the key takeaways are that each of these images are a slice. You can scroll through them and that will encompass a stack of images uh, or a sequence. And these names here, these are sequences um, and each sequence is sort of optimized to show different things uh, to us as radiologists. And as you're looking through your images, um, you can uh, try to decipher things on your own. If you feel like uh, you're struggling to find things or look at things, that's what we're here for. We're definitely happy to help you. And that's basically Medifini's whole point of existing. So please reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to help you. We'd be happy to make you a personalized video report and uh, essentially use models and art just like this and uh, even comparing your study to a normal um, to accurately show you exactly what's happening on your own study. Uh, I hope this was helpful and uh, like I said, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.